that's just what it is. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. You had just won three championships in a row and you're on to your fourth and your, your body's like, I'm done. Base, yeah, I, I guess in a way, yeah. Like I haven't had a friend since I was seven. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy. What's up, Poto? How's it going, Dingo? Uh, just, you know, getting by. Is that how we do it these days? I mean, we just get by, you know? What have you been up to? Uh, lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Orange County's been really good. Um, we went out to sushi last night, so I'm giving you COVID now, so. I feel um, like, I feel like you. you, like, you've been in retirement for so long, you've kind of been prepared for, like, the lockdown. <laughs> You know, it's been a while. If you really start to think about it, I think uh, here in the States, it was 2014. So it, it doesn't seem long, but then all of a sudden you start thinking about it and you're like, holy shit, it's a long time. So you retired at 25? Uh, I think I just, there's 26. 26? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good retirement. Yeah. I mean, I think I retired around 32. That's not bad. No. But that's still long. That's way too late to retire. I mean, I think our sports are uh, quite a bit different, right? Like Chad Reed's still kind of going, right? I don't know. He's your mate. (laughs) No, I think he retired this year. Finally, last year. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. He might come back. Yeah, he's definitely. You you never know. You never know. He keeps coming back. He's like got nine lives. So I've been watching. I I, I follow you a lot on social because kind of hang out with people. Like it's like a little weird too. Um, You've got the two boys, right? Yeah, uh, and I see the ones like super out there and one's not so out there it, it all depends on the day and what it is uh gage is is uh more like me and in brax is, is just like his mom um in a lot of ways and but then you'll i'll get him out on the bikes and brax wants to jump his pw and gage is like nah, nah i'll just i just want to go like kind of fast and like ride but brax is like where like i don't know if he's going to be a freestyler or what like he, like he's like where's the jumps at i'm like don't worry about the jumps ride I saw a major crash the other day. Like a major crash. Yeah, Gage, yeah. I happen to have it on slow-mo, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what wow. was he jumping? Uh, that's like the pool, you know, it's elevated, like, I don't know, maybe two feet or so. And mind you, that wasn't the first time he had done it. Like, that was the 15th time, and he just happened to crash that time, like 15 times into it. So, um, and he got up, sniffled a little bit. I made him do it again. He crashed again because then he was... He was, he was nervous. And I said, well, you can't not, you have to do it again. So he, he I made him do it again. And, and, and then the video that I posted after that was him redeeming himself. Dad, dad says you got to do it again. Yeah, dad says you got to do it again. You got to do it again. How to. old is he? They're four. They're four. <laughs> and yep. he's already freestyle motoring. So, I mean, well, crashing at this point. Well, that's a big part of it. No? <laughs> so, you got to get, I mean, you you gotta get back up on the up horse. To like take it to the next level, right? That's right. Yeah, you got to get, you gotta, I mean, look. If if I were to let him quit and walk away, then they're gonna, you know, he potentially be worried about it next time. And uh, he gets back up, make him do it again. Um, and if he wants to be done after that, then then I'm cool with it. So let's take it back to to Washington. You grew up south, like west south. Of, west of Seattle, so Bainbridge Island side um, across the water. So you can either take the ferry or you can do go to Tacoma Narrows. You can't really go really north of Seattle, right? Uh, I mean, you, you can. <laughs> you can. It goes that into Canada, dingo. <laughs> yeah. Or, Two hours is the border. Matt Baker. I, I've had some. Str- I've had some struggles getting. We got into Canada every time. We yeah, we've got. They let us in all the time. Do we drove once? They from, just wouldn't let you back in. Yeah, the no. US. We drove once from Oregon all the way to like Alaska. So we drove all the way through Canada. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. How we was that? Uh, we played a lot of Scrabble. Uh, <laughs> I think it was like ninety six hours of driving, and then the road in gets what? crazy bumpy. We had a motorhome, so we oh, did it wow. with like eight people. And three snowmobiles. Yeah. yeah, we lost the snowmobiles. Bet you think that smelled like a dirty sock, that motorhome. Pretty much. Well, it smelled like a lot of gasoline in the back because we had two snowmobiles that were bouncing around. And the we acting like the road, remember how it's like they have like the permafrost going? So the road like freezes and cracks. So you couldn't go over 45 or 50 because you'd just be like, boom, boom, boom. 
Ooh, we caught air a few times. Yeah, a around. trucker <laughs> waved us down and stops us from like a mile away, waves us down, stops us. It's like, did you boys have a trailer? We're like, yeah, we got a trailer. He's like, yeah, I saw a fly off the road way back. <laughs> yeah, we, the trailer became detached with two snowmobiles on it. Dustin Craven snowmobile, he was not <laughs> oh, happy Lord. about that. We got the trailer, it's all right, we got the trailer. You went back, back and got it? Yeah, yeah, put yeah, some, put some, you know, put some water on it, stood on the thing and back so on it. Did it break the hitch or just came? Or no, it just popped right off the thing. It, like We're motorheads, dude. We figured it out. Also, about it was kind of like, who is the last person to touch the hitch? To touch the hitch, which I believe might have been me. Yeah, right. Well, there you go. Good thing there was, uh, you guys were in the middle of nowhere, I presume. Pretty much, right? It was definitely a cool drive, though. I mean, it was definitely one of those things that was like, we'll definitely remember forever. Yeah, I'm not going to forget that one. <laughs> so you started racing at five. Is that true? Yeah. So uh, my grandpa is 83. So he had two motorcycle shops. So my dad was into it. And then my dad got me and my brother into it. So we started riding around. I actually had a three wheeler around three or four and then PW50 for six months that I had that. And then dad was like, all right, well, those things are, you know, whatever. Not really uh, put me on a 60. So then I was barely big enough for a 60. Um, couldn't even use the clutch. So they'd have to push me, like get me going. And then I'd run around in one gear and dad's like, you got to shift the thing. You're going to blow it up, you know, just yeah! through the front yard, you know? So, but yeah, it started around four, four or five. And you, I mean, probably don't remember it. You even remember what it was like racing back then? Is that even, is that, is that a memory you have? Like, you know, I, and I don't know if it's because I grew up into it and it was kind of a family thing. Um, my dad raced and he would bring us racing. So when he brought us racing, he would also race when we were pretty young. Yep. You know, so I can remember going to a specific track like uh, SIR. So Seattle International Raceway had a little motorcycle track. We would go there. Um, Port Angeles is even north or even west of and west a little north of us. And we would go up there and ride all the time. Yep. Um, but yeah, as for like real memories of that stuff, I not not a ton, you know, Beca and maybe it's because we did it all the time. Yep. Well, what about like, did you ever have any like first like scary moments on a motorcycle you remember? Or were you scared? So of crap we had, yourself? I was probably nine maybe. And my dad built this track. We had like two and a half acres and he built this track on the side of this hill. And it wasn't like real steep, but it came down and went up and it, it was like kind of a kidney bean kind of shape. Deal. Yep. And he built a little set of whoops and I'd done thousands of laps there. And then something went wrong and I was going through the whoops and got whiskey throttle and like went off the side of this hill and like, I don't know, flew probably 30, 40 feet down into like a bunch of sticker bushes and landed at the base of this stump of a tree that had been cut off. And at the time I had like a pretty cheap helmet, broke that, broke my wrist. Like I just flew down this thing. <laughs> that was probably like my first big, right. you know, big crash. So you first turn heads on the super mini bikes on the one, two fives? Yeah, probably. So Kawasaki picked me up yep. right at like 12 years old. Yep. So Team Green. And yep. then it went from Team Green into Pro Circuit and then Factory. So what was it like? So what was that like? And who was guiding you through that process? Was like that, like in, in that, in that stage there, who was like the. So my mom and dad, basically it was just, it was us, you know? And yep. then we rode for, we rode for Yamaha and then we ended up, um, you know, dad was like, you know, pro circuit, this is like, you know, where we need to end up, you know, when we do turn pro, you know, so when Kawasaki made us the offer, it was pretty cool because we had then a stepping stone to get right. If, if you were, you know, checked all the boxes yeah. then you could go right into pro circuit, you know? Right. Um, and, and they're still today, they're one of the best teams out there, but even back then they even had more of an upper hand than they do now. Um, so it was the place to go. So my dad and then Craig Martin was uh, actually the team green manager at the yep. time and just took off from there. You know, what's crazy is you were one of the first original, you're one of the original monster athletes. You're still a monster athlete today. Yeah. I think it, 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 it shows obviously, um, you know, the company, uh, that they back their athletes and, and also with, we've done, we, we've both been able to do you know, really cool things together. And, and I'm just, I'm glad to be a partner with them still today. So pro circuit, Mitch Payton. Yep. Mitch Payton. Right. So let's, let's talk about Mitch. Let's talk about Mitch Payton. Let's talk about him, man. Like 
he has, and I think always will be, the Don God of the Godfather, the, the everything of everything. If you're coming up through motocross and you're going to end up in that, you know, in the 250s and you're going to become, if you're going to become a champion, if you're going to win the Monster Energy Supercross, if you're going to become a, an indoor and outdoor champion, I don't care, any champion in the world, like, he knows. He can spot you from a mile away. Exactly. And, and I, like you said, bring him up as like the godfather. Uh, you know, a lot of people kind of put Roger DeCoster in that. Um, but for me, I put, especially for any of these kids that grow up here in the United States and race amateurs and, and you know, watch the Supercross and Motocross, Mitch is, to, to, is that figure here. Um, I think for all of us is, is like the godfather. Started off as racing desert, you know, back in, back in the day, ended up getting hurt, paralyzed in a wheelchair. And then bought this little shop. I mean, he'll, he could probably he'll obviously tell you the story better, but bought this shop and it was building pipes and little parts. And then he built this thing all the way up to where it is now. And I think they're the most winningest team out there. When was, so the transition from, how's the transition from amateur to pro in, in, in Supercross or Motocross? How does that work? So you, you're able to turn 16 or when you turn 16, you're able to go professional. You get your pro, pro license. Back in the, when I did it, you didn't need any points. You didn't need any, uh, I guess you didn't need any check marks to get in. Now you kind of have to go and you have to get a certain am amount of, or you have to, I think you have to get four points. Let's call it four amateur style points or whatever to be able to get your pro license. So um, it was much easier back in the day. You just, hey, I'm 16. I'm able to sign up. I'm pro. I'm going to go try to qualify. Now they have a little couple more hoops to jump through. Um, but yeah, it's like, 16 years old, if, if, and prior, it happens way before. It's even happening earlier than when I got signed to Pro Circuit. I got signed to Pro Circuit when I was like 16, 15, 16. Now they're signing these kids, and I'm sure it's happening in snowboarding. Like these, these companies are seeking out these, these riders so early. And it's a gamble because they may not ever turn into anything, but then, and, and they can sign them at 10 years old. And then they got to, and then it's a risk though, because sometimes they, they hit a home run. Sometimes they're like, what, what happened to this kid? Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like there's so much pressure to that too, right? And like both you guys can testify to this as, as being, I don't know, child stars or kids that are from your young teenagers being thrown into something. What's the, what was the pressure like back then? How, what you had to go through on a daily basis? Like, did you have girlfriends? Did you have, was there, or is it just solely... I mean, it's solely, it's solely dirt bikes, you know, you, you really, it, it is. Um, but yeah, you're, when you're able to turn, like, you know, when I turned 16, my, when I turned pro, I just turned 17, my contract was 200 grand or 250,000, I think it was, you know, at 16 years old, 17 That's years nice. old. That's a nice payday at 16. You know, so. What is getting that payday? <laughs> I mean, not at 16, no. I feel like you really had to put a few more. You know, obviously, it's more niche sport in a sense. Um, but definitely, I mean, making, I think one of my first 16-year-old contracts was like for $3,000 a month. And it was like, what? It's like <laughs> raising the roof. Like, hey, mom, I don't know. College? I think I might wait. Look at this. I'm going to make $3,000 But he probably had year. two girlfriends. Yeah, I mean, totally different, right? Well, yeah, that's where all that money went was those two <laughs> girlfriends for sure. Totally so, different, you know, like w that wasn't the same way for us, you know. And when you like start racing at 16, how old is like the division, like some of the older people in that class? You can be racing somebody that's 25, 28, you know, wow. like there's no, I, I believe today there's still no age limit. You know, if you uh, score over 100 points three years in a row, then they'll bump you. But as for an age limit, there's not, right? There's mm -hmm. no, so, so that's where you come in. You had the 16 year old kid that's full of piss and vinegar, hauls ass and is, you know, makes all these mistakes, but super fast. But then you got this, this guy that's 25 years old that is, you know, really consistent, not really that fast, but ends up beating the young kid most of the time because just, just because he's a veteran in the, in the yeah, sport, you know? Yeah, waiting for you to make that mistake. Exactly, like, exactly. Who were your competitors? Like, who was who were your competitors? Like, early back in those days, or the people that pushed you or give you that drive? Like, when you're in the lights. So I think, like, when I turned pro, um, I went to Pro Circuit, and Ivan was at, just going to to the factory team. Um, I was teammates with Grant Langston for a year. Um, Troy Adams was one of my teammates. Chris Gossler. So as a team, Mitch Mitch kept us pretty close, and we would all go out and ride together. We would train together. 
Um, so for me having at 17, having Langston, which I think Grant's 10 years, eight years older than I am yeah. or so. So, which, you know, just turning, coming in on the scene, that's a big gap because he's already been there for, you know, eight years. Plus he came from Europe. And so his, his experience level was so much higher. So just to be around that, you know, was we would always be just watching him and, you know, paying attention to what yeah. he did. So at this point, does Mitch Payton kind of become the father like? Or is your dad, your dad's there, right? But is Mitch like, who's the driving force? I'm like, who's in charge of what Ryan's doing on a daily so basis? So when I was an amateur, it was my dad. And then when I turned pro, my dad, I had a trainer. He hired, uh, we hired Randy Lawrence. And he was like my physical trainer and then also kind of kept track of what I did at the track or did keep track of. And so if my dad, because, you know, at 16, 17, you kind of think you know everything. And, you know, me and my dad were button heads, you know, here and there and whatever. So it was good because my dad was able to, whatever my dad wanted to get done, he could go to Randy and then tell him, you know, I think we should be doing. And then Randy could come over here and then, all right, well, if Randy says whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. like it just, it's just kind of the way it goes, right? Like if if it's your dad doing it, you're like, ah, well come on, beat it. Let's, you know, like, I don't need to do that, you know, but if Randy says, all right, well, we end up doing it, right? So um, he was smart in that way to put somebody else so he didn't have to be there constantly pecking at me. Um, What kind of, like, hazing, is there any, like, in motocross, like, being a young kind of am and then you're into, like, these olders? Because I know for me in snowboarding, it was, like, some of my first, like, out-of-the-country trips. Well, one, I was rolled up in a whole hotel carpet all the way down the hallway and, like, carried (laughs) downstairs and so there that's was- the bummer part of our industry and our sport is I see wakeboarding and I see snowboarding and, you know, skiing and all these kind of the, uh, these other sports that are very like a free spirited like mm-hmm. type sport. Um, we're, we're very confined to our group. So like you say, what, what, what was the initiation or the hazing or this or that? There wasn't because we were kind of on our own. Like mm-hmm. we stayed to our group. Yep. You know, so there was none of that. And that, I think, takes a little bit of the fun out of it or it takes a lot of the fun out of it because we don't have this. Like if you see like you guys are down there at the bottom of the pipe. Here comes all your buddies, even though you're competing against each other. If you know he smashed it, he, you're like, dude, he smashed it. You guys are all you're like you're stoked. It's not like that in our sport. Do you think that's like a reason why you retired or people in your field retire at such a young age, a younger age? I think that's one of it. Yeah. I think that is one reason. Yes. Like there's not, it's it, all the, all the weight is on our shoulders, you know, and I'm not saying it wasn't for you guys, but like what I did, I think wrong a little later in my career was, is like, if we went out and raced and we lost and I'm saying like, we got third, you know, like still great, great, you know, and but, snowboarding, he's two time Olympic silver medalist. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's why I'm really stoked on your number. <laughs> number two. But I, in I racing, like second, it does, like second is first loser. Exactly. And then yeah. I go back to the truck and they're like, you know, and especially because I won a lot, you know, and they were like, well, you know, like what happened? And I was like, oh, I just didn't have it tonight or struggled here or struggled there. So like I kind of put that on, on top of like all everybody on the team was kind of down, you know, and I get it. We all are there to do a job and we want to win. So then I was like, shit, we're all, you know, they're everybody's kind I don't want to say got their heads down, but like I took all of their all of that pressure and put it on my yeah. shoulders because like, I was like, I'm the one carrying this team. Right. So, so that I think that's one thing that I, that I did very wrong because ultimately it, it is a, is, it is a business as much as I enjoyed who I hung out with and loved, I love my team over at Kawasaki was that like, ultimately I'm a racer and a rider and an athlete. And when I det- decide to retire or they don't, you know, or I'm not good enough anymore. Yeah. They, they, you know, they, they let you know that the door is right there. Because I remember the first time I saw you race live at Anaheim and you uh, were on the same team as Chad. Yeah. And I, 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 I went over to see Chad and then I was like, all right, maybe that's time. And I looked at you and I was like, these guys don't like to have any fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. And it wasn't Anaheim 1, <laughs> uh, which is the worst one out of any of them. You go there, you can cut any piece of any of the air around any of the trucks with a butter knife, you know, yeah. like everybody's just so uptight because they don't know where they stand. And, and, you know, it's, you can, you can lose so many points round one, but you can only, you know, you can only, if you win, you, you still only get a three point gap, you know? So it's like, okay, it's great. We high five when we win, but if you have a super bad night, it's like, dude, everybody's like, dude, now we're, now we're 16 points down. Right. So it's like, it's great to win Anaheim one. I've won it twice. And I've also done super shitty other times. Yeah. And it's like, dude, 
you leave there like we have a fire drill on Monday. Back mm-hmm. to the test track, suspension. Yep. Like, where'd we go wrong at? Like, let's figure it out. Like, it's it's gnarly. So, would you say that A1 is like the most important race of the season? Or it's, it's just the most important. It's one of the most important races in only in the sense that you can't, if you go there and you have a major disaster, that's what could kill you. But if you go there and get mm-hmm. fifth, it's actually not bad. Fifth is okay. You're right. You, you didn't lose a ton of points. You did okay. You kind of see where everything was. You see, you know, like, and then round two, you do a little bit better. You make some adjustments. But if you go there and get 20th, then you're like, dude, I'm, I'm 20, 25 points down. Yeah, you're Spons fighting all season. To you're get fighting back. all season to get that back, you know? And then it was even harder, I think, when I raced than it is now because you had myself, Dunge, and Chad, and James, right? You had four. Oh, guys. powerhouses. Like, I used to love, you guys are like the dream team for me. I was like, because. Because Stuart's so out of control, you're like, this dude's either gonna win or he's, he's gonna, gonna die. Cry. Yeah. <laughs> but what made it so hard was is you had Dunge like unbelievably consistent. I was pretty consistent. Chad was pretty consistent. So when you have guys that will go from first to third, first to second, third to first, like you only there's only a couple points that swing. But mm-hmm. now if you go back and look, like you might have Eli win one weekend, but then he'll go and get 10th the next weekend. Yeah. Big point swing. Yeah. That- so that's, you know, that's easier to make up the points if you've had a bad or bad round. And in that kind of battle of the four guys you were talking about, do you guys, were you guys friends or friendly? Like even when you're on the team with Chad, are you guys friends or it's like this weird? Separate. Sep- crazy. Yeah, separate. Camp, huh? that's, yeah, it's separate. That's Yeah, It's separate. Crazy. Your buses are next to each other. You look the same. Totally. But you guys are not cool. And not cool. And that's what makes it not fun. And I think that's mm-hmm. like looking back to see other sports. You're like, it's a bummer. We're not more like that. Because I think a- as a whole, everybody that's involved could have more fun. Yeah. If it was like that. Right. But it's just not. I don't, it's just it's not that way. And then, like, the separation between you guys, it was, like, I mean, that was super exciting to watch. And I feel like we lost that. You lost, like, like motocross lost that for a while. And I think it has slowly started to come back. And it's exciting now. But it was, like, you guys had that, that, that bout that was, like, it was, it, was, it was cool to watch it. But to know that you guys didn't like each other yeah, is, no, like, like, even better. A few words would be said down on the floor. But, like, other than that, like, me and James wouldn't talk to each other. Um, Chad and James, very few. Me and Chad, very few. Um, Dunge kind of ran his own program. Like it was very like you, you know, like you can go down there and I'm standing over there. Chad's here. Ricky's or uh, uh, James is there. Like it's separate. Yeah, separate. separate dude. So what's that like though when you get into like the start gates? Because I think like for everyone who hasn't raced, I feel like that's got to be like one of the most like kind of intense, like anxious feelings. And then it's like. Holy crap. I mean, there's a hundred bikes racing out into like one turn and you're next to these guys who you pretty much haven't said words to with, you know, keeping camp separated. So the good thing is, is obviously we're, we're on two wheels and, and say if somebody's coming after you, like the odds of, of them getting out free and clear kind of slim. So Mm -hmm. as much as, you know, I don't like you they're they try to stay free and clear of everything because you know that's points that they're losing if they go down by trying yep. to like so it's it things are pretty pretty i guess uh um you know middle we try to stay middle of the road when it comes to that especially on the line because that's the most chaotic part you mm-hmm. know like i've looked down like you said yeah it, it, aggressive uh like look down at my heart rate just sitting on the line and it's like 130 just sitting we're not even riding yet it's 130 beats just sitting you know, which is pretty high, you know, just consider, considering we're just, I'm not, not moving, just sitting there, not and even then, talking. When does the heart rate go up? Is the heart beating? It's just, yeah, just adrenaline. Blood, yeah. Blood adrenaline. So you got, you know, you got 60,000 fans inside and the you're stadium. And you're just waiting to pin it. Yeah. And then it bikes start and then it goes up a little bit more. And then I think I, I, you know, then your mind is just fully focused and I'm sure it goes down a little bit, but then as soon as the gate drops, it's, it's, you know, straight to once one 180, 185, depending on your your threshold, but 190. And then it sits at that the whole time. It depending on the race, but yeah, it'll it'll sit. You'll drop just a little bit once you get into a little bit of a groove, but it'll sit at 180 for for 20 minutes. Is it true most of the time you're out that you you don't breathe much while you're out on the track? So uh, like a lot of rookies that come in, they hold their breath, and that's what Supercross it does to you. You, you hold your breath and you end up, that's what just drives your heart rate through the roof. And then all your, your muscles are starting to burn and everything else. So as, a, as an experienced rider, you're like, okay, triple breathe here, breathe. Like eventually as the older you get doing it, like uh, I can, I can go do it now and I can do more laps than say a rookie that came in 
that's way more fit than I am. Mm -hmm. Just because I know where to breathe and how, no, how exactly. the roll is. I feel that because like definitely in like half pipe riding, I'll get to the bottom of half pipe and be like, oh, I forgot to breathe the entire time, you know, because you're like so focused. And yeah. then it's like that way all the way to the, the first turn. But I bet you you're, you're better like, than than a rookie that comes in and he's first X Games and he's coming down the chute. You oh, know? for sure. I'm better than any rookie that's coming in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> definitely holding his breath. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just like one of those things because you're like, it's such an intense moment where you're like focused on what you got to do. But like breathing is just that simple routine. that's like that upper hand, right? And totally. You probably come around that first turn sometimes. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here it is. Made it through it. Let's go. 100%. Yeah, it makes a big difference to breathe. So 2006 was your first lights championship? Yep, outdoors. Outdoors. Yep. Motocross. And, and then and then 2007 was your first indoors? Yep. And then 2006 to 2008 you won outdoors? So 3 years in a row. Yep. For yeah, for for lights class. Who's behind you? Who's getting second and third at this time? You should have one on your computer. I don't know. I idea. don't even know that. No, I don't. I don't, even, I don't, yeah. I don't have rear view mirrors. Um, I don't have the, I don't listen up, on it. So but it wasn't like it wasn't Stuart. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, because James was already up. They were the already next. in there. So you. Yeah. It's crazy because I forget how young you are. It trips me out. I'm yeah. just like, man, like you're thirty two. You're, you're 32. way younger than I am, and I'm supposed to be young. <laughs> That's kind. Of, I look back and I'm like, I feel like I'm pretty young, and like, shit, I'm like thirty two <laughs> now. Not that it's old, but you're like, I, I mean, you are. I mean, where to go? Compared to like, yeah, you, you have a kid come go? in and he's 16 now. But you left at the, like when you left, it was like, all right. So like you won your last championship and then what was the deal? You just wanted to be out. You wanted to go to Europe. Like what, 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 what happened there? Yeah. So I, I, um, just, so back to, to rewind for like that season, like I was just, I was, I was completely over it. 2014. Yeah. Didn't want to didn't want to ride, you know, didn't want to see a bike, you know, just over, over the pressure mainly like that year. Um, I actually had like, don't, I don't, I couldn't tell you today what it was, but there was two instances that I had. And I think it was a stress related deal. Like I had these major, like, st like call it like a stomach ulcer, like, a like mm -hmm. bad enough to where I had to go and, and go to the hospital to, to like get pain meds for it because it was, it was that excruciating. And, and, you know, I've got five plates in this, this leg. I've had four ACLs. So like pain is something that I'm used to. I couldn't deal with this. Like it was, it put me to the ground. So, you know, going back, looking at that, it was like, I was just under this pressure cooker to, you know, perform. And a lot of that was probably myself. Put it, mm -hmm. I put it on myself, but that's just what it is. You know, like, I don't know. I don't. You had just won three championships in a row and you're onto your fourth and your, your body's like, I'm done. Base, yeah, I, I guess in a way, yeah. Like I haven't had a friend since I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, you could say so. Like, literally, I went to Canada and I woke up for uh, it was one of the Supercross rounds, and we were there in Toronto. And I woke up with this like, like stomach started as a stomach ache, and then like literally, I went down to the truck, and Bodner come. I like, dude, go get Bodner, and Bo he's the um, mobile medical unit guy that was there. Our guy that we've seen every single weekend, so he knows us really well. And he's like, yeah, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, unless you get scanned, like I can't really help you. So I went to the went to the hospital and like excruciating, excruciating pain. They gave me call it like a like a morphine or what whatever the good stuff, the good stuff enough to make me basically fall asleep, pass out. And I was there till five o'clock that night. So I missed all the practice and then time qualifying. And then it, after I woke back up around five o'clock or like I was before five, but like round three, I sat in there for another two hours. I was like, all right, well, so you're like, I'm fine now. So like, I was totally fine. So I was like, I need to get out of here. Like I got to get out of here. Cause, cause I, there was a provisional that like, even if I didn't go through practice and do time qualifying, I was in the top 10 or whatever. So they would seat me into qualifying. So I went back to the stadium and, and suited up and, and never had seen the track and went out and raced. Like I went to the qualifier and used that as my practice, got my bearings and then went out to last chance, qualified for the main and, and, and went and raced that night. Like that, I mean, you That's have to a lot race. Of pressure. You have to race. Mm -hmm. Like I would have lost 25 points. I would have probably lost the championship if I wouldn't erase that. What's your dad saying to you at this point? Um, you know, at that point, he, he not much, you know, like you're, you're, I was a man, you know, like he knew that 
well, the way like the way I'm raising my kids is kind of I guess how I was raised, you know, like you 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 push them to the limit of because if not, they're always going to take the easy way out. And I know that's how I was. Yeah. So he knew that like I, you know, if it's bad, it's it's it, it's bad. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like, oh, well, he's he's soft, you know, like, you know, it's not the way it was. So he's like, obviously wanted me to be safe. You yeah. Know, I'd be out there. But like, if you can go out and race, you race. You're right. Because you know what was crazy to me is like watching you guys do the indoor series and they take, I don't know, what is it, a week, two weeks, a month, less it's than a month? Sometimes, well, when we were, now it's four weeks. I believe when we did it, it was like two weeks. We have two weekends off. Into the outdoor series. Yeah, right in. Straight in. It's Hang town. Bro. <laughs> and the outdoor series is is got to be more grueling too, right? It is just differently. It is. It's, it's a whole different grueling. It's, you know, uh, Two 30 minute motos, but in the hundred and, you know, could be 105 degrees. So it, yeah, just a whole different, uh, style of racing, but yeah, it's, 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 and I think that's the other reason why that, you know, Ricky retired at 26, 27. I retired 20, 26. Dunge was at 26, 27. Um, yeah, they have a track record, right? Chad Reed's still going kind of. Chad's still going. <laughs> uh, but they have a track record of these, of these of high high end athletes retiring early when i think they should be looking at the drawing board and be like how do we keep these guys racing because they're they're not too old 100 yeah. percent. like i look at what you guys do too and i think most people that don't understand supercross or, or, or motocross on that angle don't realize it's like they can watch moto gp or they can watch these other things and it's like dude, those guys are gnarly i get it and they what they do is extremely but what you guys like when i found out that you guys don't breathe for 20 minutes i was like what Pinning up dirt by going over triples, going over whoops, going 100 feet through the air, passing people, having to do these qualifiers, having to do the indoor series, having to do the outdoor series, not stopping, not having a life. And then when you guys crash, you guys break bones. Yeah. It's like you got to stay on your bike because if you don't stay on your bike, you're done. Yeah, no, for sure. So I, I, well, that's what really, I, like, I, I, I hit, beat my head against the walls. Why don't they look at the record, the track record of like us retiring? And go back and try to like figure out why are we retiring so early? Because it's not a skill thing. I was still winning. Ricky you, was still winning. You, Dunge was still winning. I was still winning. You know, like so. Did I, Dunge I, last year he retired? Did he win? He won championship his, yeah, out Supercross. I, and I, I think outdoors, but I don't know. Yeah, I, think, I mean that's definitely like an important thing as far as like like you're saying for extending the career, right? And I'm sure you have like a few kind of tips of like things that could take that pressure off, you know, in the sense like for me in snowboarding, it was like, all right, I'm going to focus on like jumps and filming stuff for, you know, a few weeks while I still compete half pipe. And I realized like, whoa, that made getting back in the half pipe really fun because I excelled at it where the other ones, it was like learning something new, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that totally makes sense. I don't know what that is like for like where can you push? I can't. I don't know. I well, who, tell you. who 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 makes that happen? Like, how does that even? How does that start? Like, is it like how do they do that? Is it is it you? Sh- they should only focus on an indoor or an outdoor, and not kind of do both. Or how do you? Ha- I mean, the manufacturers want both, really. You know, yeah. Like they want. It's they, a business. It's a, it's a business. You got to keep. And they want to so, win. They only want. They want to win. They want to sell motorcycles, and they pay you to win. So. Yeah. But, you know, and especially somebody like myself, being that it is a short career, like you want to maximize every penny that you can make because, you know, you could end up, you know, missing a whole season or getting hurt to where you're like, okay, well, I'm going to retire. You know, like you got to maximize all of it, you know, your earnings and the wins you can get because the more you win, the more value you can pull, the more money you make in the end, you know, it it is a business. So that's why you have to treat it, you know? What, and I don't um, think everybody loves, I mean, I know there's people that love their job. I get it. There is, but I don't think everybody that just goes and sits behind a desk loves their job. If you sell insurance, like some people may, right. But like yeah. this became our job. Right? Yeah. The so, Geico man loves his job. Exactly. The you little know, gecko. Yeah. Oh. Gecko. Yeah. I like that guy. Yeah. Um, but I think it gets really hard though, too, like competing when you feel like your body's not at that hundred percent. That you too. Know what I mean, like when you're nursing, like your uh, your nursing wrist surgery an from a few like months earlier. Like we do, earlier, we do six, we do six, we do seventeen rounds in sixteen, or uh, we do, yes, uh, seventeen rounds in eighteen weekends. So the first sixteen when I was racing was straight, sixteen weekends straight. So think about like, you know, a sprained, you know, even wrist or ankle or, you know, I, what if you I, just I, ripped your fingernail yeah, off? Yeah, and like, what are some of those injuries that you got to like you had to compete on? Where you were like, it's always it was always. I was pretty lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, but your body's never 100%. Is your body 100% at 
at A1. I was lucky enough to to have a, a few of my seasons that were like, comp- you know, you always have a little nagging thing here mm-hmm. or there, but nothing that I, I should say slowed me down. Yeah. Well, that maybe helped you win four championships. You know, except yeah. for the big ulcer and the yeah, the, like I had that twice, and literally I showed up and and I went and raced, and then I had one the night before winning, I think, two thousand fourteen championship in the in, in New York. Like literally, I woke up, massive, same thing. Went to the went to this little dive hospital thing that was at the hospital. A dive bar, dive hospital. Yeah, they got those? yeah, I didn't know they exactly. Had dive, dive hospitals. Guy goes in. Are you sure he's not? A druggie i'm like dude I, and they're like no he's not, he's not you know because because i was like i just know i know what you need to do you need to give me this so i can just like basically pat and it worked last time i figured it's gonna work this time and the guy goes are you for real yeah like, all right on. you need a shot of morphine in yeah, your yeah, yeah right like now. come on like really he would literally he asked that he goes is he not is he a yeah. you know <laughs> and then you're and then the guy's like well he's addicted to speed but only yeah. on the motorcycle <laughs> yeah so literally stayed all night in the hospital woke up next morning Went to the track, suited up, and I was lucky enough to even win one that I won that night. Yeah, I mean that's what? incredible though. And you said you had four ACL surgeries. Uh, yeah, three or four. Yeah, I don't even know. Three, three. three. Uh, three, three and a half months. And you'd be, and you should be surprised too. Like after taking three and a half, three and a half, four months off, I would come back to ride. And Eldon was my trainer at the time, and Casey was my practice fight, uh, practice fight mechanic. And they're like, dude, like, I just, yeah, I feel pretty good. And he goes, you're faster now. And I couldn't swing a layover bike for three and a half, four months. You're faster now than you were when you left. Just because that disconnect from the bike, you know, mm-hmm. w- w- did, did really well for like your mental and just your physically, physical, you're not beating up on the, getting beat up on the bike. And it does a lot. How was your mental health through all of that? Uh, pretty good. You know, like I, we're stuck. In, I feel for me, I was stuck inside of a bubble. Yeah. So, you know, like I just, I did my job, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to think about a lot. My wife did most, did all of this stuff and I just did what I was supposed to do, you know? How so, did you meet your wife with not like, how did that happen? Uh, she worked for Kawasaki actually yeah. doing uh, PR. So. Because it's got to be hard to meet people that, you know, and you're. Yeah. I mean, you know? I think, I think the way that, you know, like, I guess you can take it as serious as you want. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, there's, and I think, I took it to the extreme mm-hmm. and Dunge took it to the extreme. I think um, other guys have done a little better job of having fun. And I don't, you know, that could be like, you know, for instance, we're in a lot of cool cities every Saturday every night, week, right? Yeah. Every Saturday night. And like, I've never gone out in any of them mm-hmm. after a race. See, in snowboarding, you get to go out and potty the one night. And I'm not though. saying that like, yeah. hey, I'm not saying like, hey, you know, I should have done that or you're going to go get just totally tanked. But like, there is a lot of cool things that you, and if you can see out, see outside the box and then still perform on Saturday, go out and be able to do and have some fun and, and do a little of the tourist things or whatever, you know, like I was one, one track mind. Like yeah. I, I had to live in here or it seemed like I didn't perform well on Saturday. And it worked out for you. It did. Cause you didn't lose. What was the most memorable championship? I would have to say, um, so obviously your first 450 premiere. Yep. You know, win like w- race yeah, your, or win. well, no championship. Like finally knocking that one off, you know, getting that one done was 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 pretty big cuz obviously you see it you've been around it. I grew up around it. You see somebody MC winning it, you see Ricky winning it. Like it's pretty big. So finally knocking that one off, you know, I was the I didn't have the target on my back. I was, Chad did, you know, Chad and James did that year. Like those two yeah. went back and forth and then I ended up winning. Uh, and then you come back year, another year later. Now you're the one with it because you mm-hmm. just won, right? So then for three years in a row, I had the target on my back. So you and McGrath, the only two to win consecutives the way that you did? You are? Just, you don't have to do the research on yeah. that? Yeah. But like- I think he did five though, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, five. But like how, um, I think, I mean- I think. Maybe my mommy was four, maybe maybe five. four straight. Four and then, straight, and then exactly. Five I think that exactly. So you're the only two I think that have four straight. How was how was two? How was Jeremy to you when you like you came through? Were you guys cool or that was another? Yeah, no, yeah. no I, all the older like you know like and Ricky if, was cool. Yeah, so like when I first turned pro pro circuit, Ricky was 
had gone through Mitch's whole program. Yeah. So Mitch, Mitch would be like, go talk to Ricky. He just got off the first moto. Go talk to him. So, so you got to go talk to Ricky Carmichael. Go, that, was, that was the guy you got to talk yeah, to. Yeah. Mitch Payton, thank you. Exactly. So I could go there, walk right in his motorhome, basically. And say, How's it? Oh, this, 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 whatever. And then, uh, so that was good for my, like, rookie year was huge, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it Town, Ben Townley had come in and trained with Ricky. So then my, my shoe in with Ricky was kind of, got kiboshed by bt because he now ricky was helping bt a little bit you know so. yep <laughs> wow but i'd already got a year under my belt kind of had seen all the tracks like it was an it was you know it, i was I, I knew what to expect then so uh when you had to make that decision what was it like to make the decision was it an easy decision for you to say hey i'm hanging the boots up or that was it was a uh, it went back and forth to be honest like, and I think that's part of where Europe came up was, was like, I can't do this anymore here. Yeah. Like, I'm done. Obviously, the sponsors want. I'm going to retire. Ryan Villapoto on a bike because you're the best and racer I, in the world. And I still had a, con- <laughs> I still did, I did still have a year left in my, in, on my deal. And that's kind of how the Europe thing came about was, okay, let's try something different. See if it's, you know, lights a different flame or does something different over here, you know, like, and we'll try that. Yeah. I didn't. Looking back on it, you know, like we have it so good here in the States and you, and you probably know, like I didn't spend, we'd go over for motocross and nations. We'd spend one week in England or one week in, in Italy or, you know, wherever it was one week, you know, and that's it. So like, I don't know what I was thinking, thinking it would be, I didn't think it would be easy, but if you've spent any time outside of the United States, like we have it so good here. Right. Like un- it's unbelievable. And it's also going to be hard being Ryan Villapoto and showing up to these other races around the world and everyone being like. <laughs> that was co- kind of, it was a different cool though. Like you'd go, I went to Argentina and they uh, like motorsports from MotoGP and, and even in, in, in motocross in Europe, you guys are uh, like, we are. Not that I wanted that, but like they literally put you us up on a pedestal, like two wheel racing, yeah. Which is and the passion for yeah. the two wheel racing is is really cool to see. So that was cool to see going to Argentina and you see all these people. Like literally, I couldn't walk down through like town, like because yeah. there was this little town outside of where the track was, and they're like they were just like people everywhere, you know. Like and sure, I didn't like that part of it it's like i couldn't even go get something to eat you know like i'm in argent i'm in i'm in patagonia yep you know and like bitch in place and you can't even kind of experience it because you're getting tracked down you know so that was a bummer part of it but but to see the enthusiasm to see the passion for it was is is really cool yeah the monster energy loretta lynn amateur nationals is the biggest amateur in the world what are your memories of of that place um so i always had to race michael essie man yeah. And like we, uh, my, his dad's not. Yeah. 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 And, and I think he's mellowed out now. Has he? Yeah. I remember watching, I used to watch the TV show just to watch his dad. I was like, <laughs> man, this guy's awesome. <laughs> totally. Totally. hundred percent. So like I raced Mike really hard. Um, and I think I only, you know, me and my dad, we only beat him ever once or twice as an amateur. Um, and we raced together for till we were, I don't know, 10 years almost. So like he was like the guy as an amateur. Yeah. Um, and when we turned pro, something switched. Something just flipped. Yeah. Um, he was on a good team, so was I, and I just excelled and he didn't, you know. But but back to Loretta's, like, um, I did well there and I only ever I you know, I got seconds, thirds, like did okay. Like my first time I ever went, I got like eleventh, yep. I think. You know, like it wasn't very good. Um, and I won my my first championship there the the year that I left and turned pro. Yeah. That's so cool. So what, like, do you remember like a race where like it clicked for you where you're like, whoa, like, did I all of a sudden just like find the zone and everyone kind of stands still for a moment there? So I think what, so I think part of that comes with equipment too. Like now when, when I was an amateur, like Mitch kept his equipment completely separate from us. So what, what Mitch Payton had was completely different than what he built us amateurs. So like when I showed up at Glen Helen and I'd been, you know, signed the dotted line, I'm pro circuit rider, showed up. He goes, all right, here's our, you're going to ride our practice bike. And this wasn't even the race bike. I went out on it. It's got factory tires. It's got, you know, factory suspension, which we had a, a the suspension wasn't so big, but the, the tires and like, he goes, also we have factory front brake 
And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, I went out literally like I did one lap and fell. Went into a turn, grabbed the front brake. It was so powerful, like washed it out. Kind of like snow bikes. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, I'm like, but then I'm like, dude, it's so fast. It like, I think the, like it, me riding equipment that was not obsolete or off, but just not as good as maybe some other people's made it to where when I got on that stuff that was really good, um, for example, tires, I would just run like standard tires, right? And so did everybody else. But when I got, and I was fast the way it was, but when I was able to get on factory rubber, it was like, now I can, I can push the limits so much farther. Wow, that's really so cool. it made a huge difference. Yeah. And I think that's what it was, you know, and I think also me not winning every single amateur race taught me that, you know, like, uh, I kept fighting, you know, it's not that mm -hmm. I, it's not that I didn't want to win or, I, or, you know, like then I'd come back. Sometimes it wasn't, didn't look like I was super bummed, you know, Mike won, you know, but like it, I, he didn't know how to lose because he won so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. It's like, I mean, it's, it's changed a lot too now. Right. And it's like, dude, like this last year with the pandemic, like how, what do you think emotionally those guys went through? after the pandemic kind of hit because they started a few races and then the pandemic kind of hit mid-season and then they ended up in this like bubble like how do you think that messed with the riders like, i think mentally? it messed with some of them a lot yeah and i think it it might have worked in some of some of them's favor if i was going through this this if that was me racing like i can tell you this is well m what i think like dungy what that would i think he would have struggled with that right. of, of the unknown when are we going to go racing again like i've all i'm all trained up for it like now 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 i gotta take yeah you've a got this time clock that now your body's you, used to and your structure yeah and, and then it's like okay now i gotta like you know kind of bring my training down a little bit so that you know whenever we go racing again in six weeks or whatever the break was like we can bend then peak again like i think i would have done well with that because it's just part of my my style like i it that didn't bother me little hiccups here or there, yeah. you know? So I think the guys that there, I think some of them suited it. Some, some of the pandemic suited them and some of them it didn't. So what, um, what, what, what do you think is going through their heads right now going into 2021? And what do you think the season's going to be like? Man, I, I mean, I think, I hope we have some good racing. Um, the one thing of, of not having it the way it was when, when we raced, you know, like James, Chad, me, like you kind of knew your top four. Yeah. Now, as a fan, like looking back, like, yes, we will turn it on. I'm going to watch it. Um, you don't know who's going to win. Like, and that's kind of a cool thing, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you can speculate, like, obviously Eli's going to be good. Um, Cooper's going to be good. But like you had last year, you still had in the year before you still had, um, like I was saying that the, everything was changing. Riders were all over the place. You'd have a guy that won one weekend and then you'd come back out and get fifth the next yeah. weekend. You didn't really have that with us. So, um, from a, from a fan that kind of knows the ins and outs of it, like that's interesting. But I also, I think I would, I would prefer to see every single weekend, like a, a you know, a James and a Chad battle. You yeah. Know, like, like it's just every single weekend it, you got these two out there. Right. So, you know, that's just, I guess how I grew up watching it. Who's, who, who, who's your top three or who's the, who's the winner of the 2021 pandemic season? What's your pick? I mean, I think. Do you have to go a Yamaha guy? No. I <laughs> <laughs> politics, politics. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, uh, I mean, I, my gut right now is just is going to say Eli. Yep. He's, he's, he's pretty But good. he's prone to massive mistakes, you know, so. I don't know. Yeah. That's the question mark I have. Like, you know, it took him, it took him three years to win one. Yeah. Which isn't a problem, but like you'd go, like if you go back and look at it, you're like, you, the mistakes you made were, some of them were really dumb. Yeah. You know, and I get it. We all make mistakes, but like th it, it, it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. How, uh, how is it been on Yamaha? Is, is testing a better career for you? Or is that something you enjoy more? Yeah, so I was doing a lot of Justin's testing yep. um, this last summer. Yep. Um, had a lot of fun with it. Um, currently, Star's like running the team right now, and yep. I haven't done any Supercross testing um, with them, but if yep. they call, I, I will. Um, but I actually, I enjoyed it. Like I could go there and, and, and go into the track and, and developing a motorcycle when you don't have to race it is, I think, is pretty cool and, and obvious and easier too. Like, yeah. 
you know, I can go there and give them my true feedback where, you know, like when I'm there, I'm like, as a racer, you're like, hopefully I'm not making the wrong decision because mm-hmm. if this, if I lose a second at the races, then, you know, then I'm screwed. Right. Or I can go there and just say, okay, well, this, I, I can really determine kind of what's better and what's not. Yeah. And if I don't know, I just tell them, I don't know. I can't feel it. You yep. know, like our job as a test writer is not, um, to be an engineer. Yep. Like you, we, I give the feedback, I give the feeling. Yep. What it does, this is what it does, this is what it doesn't, or this is what it feels like. Yep. And you let the engineer and the, and the and what those guys are paid to do is go figure out why it's doing that and why it feels like that. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. Also, this summer you did the Moto Fight Club. Yeah, Moto Fight Club. Yeah. Is that going to come back? I think that's 2.0 is coming back, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so that was pretty cool, right? So like uh, Rob Bytus, uh, yep. myself, and everybody else that was involved, Kevin Windham, Jake, Alessi, like we had a we had a good group. Of, Travis was there. Um, good group of dudes that were like, hey, obviously everything's shut down, locked down. You're not allowed to do anything. Um, Rob's like, hey, I got this track right here in Youngstown, Ohio. That's like, we can lock down. Um, you guys just get out here. Let's put on this, you know, like, uh, this race and put it on Moto Fight Club. And I was like, all right, it sounds pretty, you know, sounds cool. We got this whole thing set up and, you know, I think it for, for, we put the thing together in 12 days. I don't know if you watched it. Like we had some hiccups with the, you know, TV stuff, whatever, but it was, I think what was cool about it is what I heard. I haven't actually watched it personally. I was obviously racing it, um, is how raw it was filmed. Right. it was like, hey, like it was like us boys, like, hey, we're gonna do this. We're gonna televise this thing, and and we did it, you know. So like, and we did it when nobody was else, when nobody else was mm-hmm. filming That's anything, cool. yeah. Because it was like literally, yeah, it was the middle of it, re- right as the middle, beginning, middle of it, like when everything was still like shut down. Um, so we were able to pull it off, and and it, it was rad. It was fun. Like, dude, we drove. I drove there. <laughs> I dr- spent, I don't know, forty hours basically there. Two days there raced and two days back drove all the way back here wow <laughs> Starly. we used to create events back in the day we, we used to, we were really good at doing powerpoint presentations and then going and presenting to people mm-hmm. <laughs> we didn't get too many sell-throughs we got a couple yeah we would collect some sponsors <laughs> here and there <laughs> we never went live with it no we never went no, 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 live days, it's so much easier to go live yeah no sam Bontrelli got us what we nearly did a cbs deal like we nearly hit the big leagues and it was like <laughs> on the phone with cbs if we're... it would have been today you guys should have a redo <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, you never know, man. It's like we're sitting together here again, so it's cool. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> what's um, what's 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 next for you? Like, what is what is you know, like what you're only you're still thirty two, man. You yep. still got so long to you know. You can you can only like fish so long. You can only <laughs> come so much. Well, I mean, I I can yell a lot with my kids, you know. So right now, that's pretty much like that's the hands on. They're we have twins. They're two boys. They're they're four years old. Um, you, you seem know. to be a super dad. It seems like, you know, your dad was an amazing dad, you know, and, and I know you went through, you know, I think, I think it's crazy because, you know, me and you have both been, went through some heartache at the same time, man. And like, yeah. I think for you, like, if you were still racing and your dad had a passed away, like that would have, for your dad, we all would have seen everything you did. You were the champion, you were the best to do. And man, it's like, Life's life's so tough, man. Life sucks sometimes, you know. But I see you with your kids, man, and I'm like, dude, that's what you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah, no, it, it is like and and lucky enough to be retired and be able to be there every day. Yeah. On on, you know, it's it is a double edged sword, like uh in you know in a few multiple ways, you know, like what are my kids gonna say? Well, what what's dad do for work? You know, like, you know, so that's I mean, we'll probably cross that road, obviously down that we'll cross that yeah. down the road, like Oh, you know, I was an athlete and, you know, I made, you know, a lot of money and now, you know, yeah, yeah you got to go to work, you know, so that's going to be set. <laughs> but even now, like being around them all the time, like it's awesome, but it's also good to get away, like to come here and do this right yeah. now, like get out of the house because like, dude, they'll, they'll pull your hair out, you know, they'll, they'll drive you to drink. Yeah. <laughs> You get to enjoy drinking now, though, at least, right? Yeah, no, it's it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 fun. Sometimes it's like, oh well, I shouldn't have done that last night. <laughs> it's good to wake up with a hangover and be like, oh man, I don't know if to, you know, settle up on a bike and pin it into a turn. And <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to do that. I, I you still enjoy those. watching every race? Yeah, like I, I don't. I probably out of seventeen rounds, I won't watch every single one of them. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to. And if not, I try. Yeah, I'll try to. If not, I'll record it. Yeah. Um. 
but yeah, I mean, I, I, I like, I still like to ride today, you know, like it's tough because if I'm not, don't have a real, like if, if I was test, like when I did the testing stuff, like I had a schedule and they would bring the bike out, we would have a, an agenda on there and we'd know what to do. And that was really fun. But like now having like, I'm not doing that now. And it's like, Hey, do you, he was like, you want to go ride? I'm like, ah, you know, like, yeah, I'll ride. But like, you know, at this point, like I, I I'm just busy with the kids. So unless Yamaha's calling and say, Hey, I want you to come out and test, which is like, okay, awesome. I want to do that. You know, like for me to ride myself, I still enjoy it. Yeah. But like, it's not like a priority. You yeah. Know? And you ride off, you, you ride like mountain bikes and bikes. You ride all, all. Yeah. I try to do, you know, try to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Our mammoth trip got canceled this year because of COVID. What happened there? Cool. No <laughs> hotels. I was just trying to tell him everything, everything's, it's crazy. Like some people have got it figured out and, and they're able to keep going. California, we fell into this, like, I wanted to go to Mana last weekend and there's like, you can't, there's nothing open. We it's should like, pull Newsom out of there. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't, you guys don't have motor homes? <laughs> you know, like, what do you need a hotel room for? It's like pack the whole Dave's trying to get people to go camp on the property outside of, yeah. at, outside of Mono oh, Lake. Yeah, really cool place oh, yeah? on Mono. Yeah. Up just past Mammoth there. Cool teepee. Lots of dirt. You'd love it. Just dirt and sagebrush <laughs> for days. We got to build a I'll bring the sprinter though. van. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. got a sick sprinter van. Sick. Yeah. Can't yeah, and a cool man cave. You got to yeah. kind of set up, man. Yeah, I've been to the house, good. dude. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing, you're doing 32 good. You're looking good. You're just like, man, like, what do I got to do today? <laughs> I got to come Kids. here and meet Dingo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Danny's got a little, like, lightning around that he's going to, like, fire oh, you what, off. Oh, good. I'm not good at these. You're not, no, but it's like, this is, this is, he's been, he's been working really hot on this. Yeah, I've been working really hard on this. <laughs> I even <Okay. laughs> cut and pasted. It's not like I have someone do that for me. Um, so think of, you know, either the first or second thing that comes to your mind here. Okay. So imagine now your house is on fire. Okay. And the kids are safe. The fam's safe. You get one more chance to run back in. What do you grab? Your treasured, most, most treasured possession. Uh, the 20,000 upstairs and my Yoder smoker. Got to cook something. 20,000 upstairs? Yeah, so upstairs? where is this 20,000? <laughs> Just kidding. You didn't show me that when I was there last time. Maybe you did. <laughs> um, who is the gnarliest rider on two wheels? Currently or retired? Um, currently. Uh, gnarliest rider on two wheels. I'm going to say not because he's an a uh, monster athlete, but Axel right now, I was out at the out at the compound and this is the stuff he's jumping I, it's yeah. cool man it's like, insane it's just crazy like to see where axel's at and like freestyle moto has been very similar for a long time i feel like right and then all of a sudden you've got this kid that like has crazy style kind of looks like a skateboarder and has this snowboard type style is doing these tricks that have kind of never been done before and like paving the way. And like, he's also had this crossover into like the urban world. Of, I was like, going to say, it's kind of like urban skate. It like, is, you know what I mean? And then it's doing. like Drake and Meek Mill and these guys all follow him and they tell their friends to follow him. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's cool. Like, it's cool. But I would say like looking back, cause I was out there, it's got like 120s, you yeah. know, like just it sends it, you know, like if you asked any moto dude to hit it, I'd, I'd be hard pressed for, I, I I would bet none of us hit him. Yeah. You'd be like, all right, is it a shoot? It's yeah. not a shoot. I'm out. Yeah. I wouldn't even do that. I no, saw that I video hit it. just like a few weeks ago. He's like, ago. come out and ride. I'm like, yeah, zero chance. I'll come out and watch. <laughs> uh, I saw that video online where he's like, I think it's like one of the Minneapolis or some, and he like almost hits the beans. Oh, that was in down like in Del Mar, I think. He's literally on his bike. I watched it like 10 times and he's like, oh, like yeah. under his handlebars and literally almost like takes his own head off yeah, in yeah. a stadium. I know. Yeah, I think that was Del Mar. Yeah. They built this jump and he come in and he overshot it, which was why he was ec like an extra, extra, probably three or four feet up. But yeah, no, he fully ducked. It's you know? crazy. Like, the property down there, you got PH, you got wallet guy just running it. I love it's, it. It's, they're he's moving so dirt and having fun. PH is yelling at people. You got helicopters doing so things they shouldn't be doing. You're like, how does the helicopter even, how does it like, how does it do that? And it's fucking so fly funny. these things backwards. <laughs> um, what's like one of your favorite athletes of all time, like growing up, or maybe even before you started competing? Mm, I mean, so we're such a one track mind. I think moto people are anyways, at least my family was, I have to go with the, with MC. Like we watched, I watched MC as supercross motocross, like, um, 
I'd have to go with McGrath. Yep. Cool. Because cool. we weren't stick ball sports. Like my dad was like, it, if football was on, he would turn it. Yeah. Turn it to the news. We're not stick ball sports yeah, if, here. If, at it's not, and if it's not, if it's if it's not, you know, uh, we got a couple of them, but they're cool. You know what I mean? They're cool. Yeah, if it's not motocross, <laughs> you ain't watching it. You know. Uh, what's one of the best parts of living in the Pacific Northwest? Um, well, I don't live there currently, but but growing up there. Oh, growing up there. Um, cowboy coffees? Cowboy. Yeah. No. Um, he wasn't allowed to have a cowboy coffee. I would he wasn't say allowed that to have a actually out back no, then. I know, they're they were, pretty they new. They only came they're, out a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have to say that it's always green. It, and it's green for a reason because it rains a shit ton. It really does winter. rain. I did some time in Oregon. But summertime, even though the, you call it a drought, say it doesn't rain for um, you know two months or whatever, and all the trees are still, all the evergreen trees are still green, and so that's a pretty part of of, yep. of that, you know. The color, the color, vibrant. Um, what's your perfect meal with the perfect person? Oh, the perfect meal. Uh, After the race. Like after, an after the race meal, perfect person. So you can just like load up. Well, he probably wasn't allowed to eat anything fun back then either. Well, that's why I said after the race. Yeah, but I probably you probably eat anything fun. So like later in my career, <laughs> do you know so, what carbs are? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. No red meat. So later in my career, I was able to. Uh, we would sneak off into uh, like uh, I think it was Winter Garden, just uh, just north of Orlando, mm -hmm. um, and we go to like this. Uh, we had two places: an Italian place, um, and then we had this other like. Uh, Call it kind of like steakhouse, but we, me and my wife would get out to go there, and and Eldon wouldn't know. We'd we'd scoop out on a Wednesday night, go have a, two glasses of wine and and uh, probably pasta or red meat. You know that was that was kind of like that was I think my last year. Like you know, so I really kind of started to like get extreme, yeah, again. get extreme, you know, and get out there and have a steak and two glasses of wine. You know, I should have done. <laughs> I should have been doing that my whole career. You know. Mm -hmm. I did it for my whole career. <laughs> Wasn't a good idea. Um, okay, so I know I hear you're into you're grilling. You mentioned some prime rib before, but what's the keys to the perfect backyard barbecue cookout? Well, cold beers. Mm -hmm. If you can't, ha you can't barbecue without beers. And do the the beers switch uh, depending on the region you're in? Like in the um, Northwest, kind of are you a, like a Rainier guy back home? Of course I. Just Coors Light everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm just, it's it's easy. You get it everywhere. I mean, I grew like Mitch, right? Yeah. You know, if you go to the semi, it's always in the cooler. So that's so uh, Coors Light, um, and yeah, good piece of meat. Like it, it could, doesn't matter what it is. Got to got to be nice and marbled. Could be big tomahawk steak, um, or just a good fatty burger. And is it smoked or just so they they grill? they call it they call it a smoker, right? But I. You, are you one of those Traeger guys? I have a Yoder. A Yoder. Yoder. Is that one so, of the pellet ones too? That is, it is a pellet. Those same are idea. Next level. Same idea. Um, New Year's Eve, I did a 14 hour brisket. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was good. Whew. It was good. I, I, I just enjoy, like, I like to just do it. Like, if we were there right now, I said, boys, let's, let's, let's have some beers and, and literally like talk shit, watch the thing cook. You know, yep. like that's like the fun part about that. And even going to the track now, like, if I can go stay overnight, you know, and, and, and just like hanging with the boys and, and just, you know, cook, talk shit. Like that's some of the, that's some of the funnest times. Yeah. Um, favorite place to travel. Favorite place to travel, uh, without not have, with not no having to, to work. Yeah. No kids. Right. No um, kids. I, I do enjoy going to Europe. Mm. Um, I like to just, I like to see how old everything is, architecture and stuff, the food. Yeah. Um, I don't want to live there. Nope. Don't want to live there. In and out. In and out. Yeah. But it's it's cool to see. Like it is crazy because it's it, the, it's just so old. The buildings are so old. You're yeah, like, and it's like, dude, why they put all this effort into this this you know like this piece of the stone and they carved it all out and and like you know that somebody was a legit artist. You know, like we don't have that out here in in, in where you know where we're at. You know, there we do have some older older buildings, but like nothing like Europe. You know, yeah. So, it's cool, and at the, let's let's face it, the food the food is better. Yeah, a lot of the time it is really good. You know, um, but it's good. Yeah, I'm a lasagna guy. Is that my what mom makes? Oh, a great yeah, I've lasagna. had this lasagna in Switzerland, and I think it was like in a Best Western. 
And it was so good. <laughs> yeah, sauce fay. I'm always going back. Um, <clears throat> so, which words or phrases do you most overuse? Um, probably when I'm hanging, drinking out with the boys, it's probably 100%. Like, I'm going to tell you. 100%? Yeah, 100%. That's the way it's going to be. Or, you know, like. 100% is yeah. a good one. Yeah. You say that a lot. Yeah, all the time. You were always 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody said something about Justin Bieber the other day. I was like, yeah, 100%, man. And they're like, what did you just say? And I was like, man, fuck. Um, <laughs> see? Okay, and then how about one more? What about if you if you could get one dream sponsor now? And is there any anything that just like would put you on cloud nine? Doesn't have to be like sport related. Could be like a diaper sponsor. Oh, right. Or is it? Oh well, I, I there's nothing like ask Dingo. There's nothing like flying in a private jet. That's true, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. that's so a we'll like take a brand new G six any want, day of the week. I want, dude. You want a G six sponsorship? <laughs> I, I, net jets. I don't have to own it. I don't. Yeah. You know, just no. just give me the. Okay. No, I don't me, need to own it. It's gonna be all it. <laughs> <laughs> like there's one luxury and I think I've done some pretty cool things, you know, in my life, uh, you know, but like there's one thing that like if anybody has the opportunity of doing yeah, is facts is being able to just to say, you know, like, let's go over here, like go to the airport. It's not even the airport, but go to the airport and walk on the plane and it's sick. That is pretty sick. That's I mean, I think one. a yacht would be real, a big ass yacht would be cool too, but I don't think you'd, you, you wouldn't use it's that as much. It's hard to get the yacht like through, you know, it's hard yeah, to get yeah, the yeah, yacht you wouldn't from use it as New yacht. York, you know? Exactly. So like, <laughs> yeah, you want to go to, you want to go to Vail. You want to go to Aspen. You want to go here. You want to go to Seattle. Like just jump in the, in the G6. And <laughs> That's burn, cool. Burn fuel. All right. Well, we're open for sponsorship. Yeah, 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 yeah. If everybody's living in Logan. Net Jets. Net Jets. Let's do we're this. shouting them out right now. So maybe it'll happen. Yeah. Man, well, that was um, that was fun. I like you're it. like I like that you uh, retired early and are living your life, man. You deserve it because I I remember the first time I I saw you, I was like, he don't look like he's having fun. No, it's it's gnarly, man. And I and I regret some of that. Like I wish I could have learned to have more fun. Um, but looking back, it all worked out for the best. You're having fun now, dude. Yeah, we appreciate you, dude. Well, I, uh, thanks for having me on the show, dude. That's it. That's right. It's a wrap. Boom! Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy.